Hello, this is Stephen Nojiri and this is another Tara Genji tradition video. In this video, we're going to look at Kusunoki Masashige's death and what the historical documents show regarding his death. The reason we're focusing on his death in this video is because, honestly, many historians and researchers skip over the important details and simply repeat the same oversimplified story. This idea that Masashige sort of just was given his orders and solemnly followed the orders, leaves a lot of people wondering, well, that sounds a little weird, you know, what actually happened here? Why did he just sort of take these orders? And it's also led to a lot of theorizing from people. However, we don't really need to theorize. The historical records actually have quite a lot of details about this event. But what we're going to focus on are these three aspects. Why did he fight? Why did he not refuse to fight, nor retreat during the fight? And his death was a big deal, right? Well, actually, no, his death was not a big deal at the time. And what other things can we learn from the details recorded in these historical documents? Let's actually address point number two first. It helps us to establish points one and three more easily once we have established point number two. So that is, Kusunoki's death was a big deal to the Yoshino court, wasn't it? Well, actually, no, it was not. And the reason that I can say this is based is using historical documents. What, what do the historical documents actually say? Let's start off by directly confronting the reality that his death is not mentioned in the Jino Shotoki. If Kusunoki Masashige was as big a you know, a bigger persona as people believe he was when he was alive at the time, surely his death would have been mentioned in the Jino Shotoki. But as I've mentioned in previous videos, he barely appears in the Jino Shotoki, and his death is simply not addressed at all. If he was such a huge figure, his death would have been addressed. But it's not. Therefore, this is one very strong piece of evidence to conclude that his death wasn't that big of a deal at the time. Because remember, the Jino Shotoki was written by the Southern Court General Kitabatake just a few years after Masashige died. The fact that Kitabatake doesn't mention his death at all means that at the time, it wasn't really a big deal. However, we the oldest versions of the Taiheiki. So remember, the Taiheiki is not really one document that was written and passed down through time. It's actually been sort of written and revised and edited, written, revised and edited, written, revised and edited, and there are many different versions that come at different points of history. So we want to go to the oldest known Taiheiki, and that and the old or the oldest Taiheiki or the oldest ones. So we're looking at the Taiheiki versions, the Taiheiki copies from the 1400s. Those are the older ones, the oldest ones. Those copies contain parts of the narrative that do not exist in the Rufuban version. Now, the Rufuban version of the Taiheiki is the mass-produced copy that, of the 1600s. Almost everyone that reads and studies the Taiheiki, you're probably reading the Rufuban version, which means the mass-produced version. It's the most simplest mass-produced version of the Taiheiki, and it's a good starting point, but it's really the weakest version of the Taiheiki that exists. So not relying on that weakest, most reduced version, but going to the versions of the Taiheiki from the 1400s, we actually see that the copies in the 1400s have additional parts. We also have Ashikaga documents, such as Baishurun, which contain more concern for Masashige's passing than the Jino Shotoki, which doesn't seem to care at all. Finally, we also have the Kusunoki traditions of later years, and the teachings of those traditions match the older Taiheiki documents and documents such as the Baishurun more than they would line up with the Rufuban version of the Taiheiki. So simply put, 
When you read the Ruhuban version of the Taiheiki, it suggests that Kusunoki was a big player in the southern court, and that he is actually, but when in reality he was more of a personal retainer of Emperor Godaigo. And he, he wasn't a major general or a commander, but the Rufuban version makes it seem like he's a, a major general, but he's not. As a matter of fact, in the Battle of Minatogawa, where he dies, he's assigned to serve under Nita Yoshisada. Nita Yoshisada outranks him. The Jino Shotoki, like I said, fails to mention or make any deal about Masashige's death. And this can really only be understood as, well, his death wasn't seen as a big deal to the southern generals at the time. It's only later that Kusunoki's sons, Masatsura and Masanori, would become important to the southern court. And then, once his sons become very important, then, looking back, Masashige begins to become important. We also find some interesting data regarding this in other places. As mentioned, the oldest known version of the Taiheiki, which is from the early 1400s, it's not a complete copy. It exists in parts and pieces, but it is the oldest known copy, the oldest known version. In that copy, we see there are additional sections where Kusunoki Masashige is actually arguing with the southern generals more about the need to not fight Ashikaga at Minatogawa. After he is assigned to serve Nita Yoshisada's forces and told to fight under Nita Yoshisada, Kusunoki gives a speech to his retainers that does not exist in the later editions of the Taiheiki. You will not find this speech in the Ruhuban versions of the 1600s. The speech is actually surprising to many people who view Masashige as having solemnly and unquestioningly took the orders. And this is because this older record actually shows Masashige struggling to accept the order and even almost passive aggressively telling his men that they will all be killed because the leadership doesn't care if the leadership throws their lives away.